Good morning, beautiful people. Today is the 25th of May, 2020, Monday. I've just had a nice sausage and egg roll from my favorite cap. I'm sat in my favorite, one of my favorite places in the world. I have a view around. It's a beautiful day. My name's Nada Cherigvand. That in English means rare light or rare illumination. I'm, um, this is the first video of, of, of which there's going to be many because I have a lot to talk about and a lot of information to release. I've been the um, victim of state sanctioned harassment for over two years now and it culminated just a few a few months ago well it actually started on the 1st of January this year the very first day of 2020 when um, I was ran out of my house by um, Sixteen armed men with automatic weapons. I was tasered, having done nothing wrong. I'd done nothing, absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, just moments before um, that that uh, incident occurred, I was trying to contact the police because I was scared for my life due to um, unbelievable levels of what people call gang stalking. And I didn't understand it. Uh, I'd never had it on that level um, before. So I was, I was very paranoid and I was very concerned for my welfare. I tried calling the police that night and, um, and uh, my, both of my phones had been hacked. So um, another number uh, kept stopping me from calling the police. Having done a search on that number, um, there are comments on the number itself saying that, yeah, it's an organized, um, gang stalking hacking organization I was tasered I was put into a van and I was taken straight to a hospital where I was locked up and forced medicated for two months when I come out of the hospital I was in such a broken state and my world was so turned upside down by the events that had occurred bearing in mind I've got no previous criminal convictions I've got no um, uh, no previous um, uh, mental health issues it doesn't run in my family yeah and uh, I, I, I wasn't taking the medication in the hospital of course I wasn't I don't even take I've never taken even paracetamol or aspirin so why would I take unknown substances and put them into my body obviously I was against it so in the hospital they threatened to hold me down and inject me with um, with the drugs that they wanted to put uh, put into me. <clears throat> and even though in the hospital I was being I was giving no one any grief, I was being uh, uh, probably the best patient men mental health patient you could ever imagine. I was um, building uh, like board games like Risk, uh, cutting them all the pieces out myself by hand um, for the other mental health patients that were in there, you know, to help, to help them, to give them something to do. I was playing my guitar and uh, being very calm and, uh, and caring, like always. But that wasn't good enough. I was told that if I didn't take the medication, they were going to inject me. So against my will, I had to take the medication. When I had my tribunal come up to get me out of there, the hospital released me um, on the first occasion, a day, the day before my tribunal because they didn't want me to speak, because they had absolutely no reason for me to be there. Um, <clears throat> anyway, after the two months in there, uh, I felt very alone. <clears throat> I felt damaged, broken. 
I felt really unhappy. And it got to the point where it was ruining my, my family relationships. Um, and my whole world was closing in around me. And at the beginning of this um, corona incident, I was left with nothing. I didn't have a roof over my head. And uh, I, wanted, I just wanted to die. The first time in the whole of my life that I, uh, that I ever, re you know, ever really wanted to just end it. Because I couldn't, I couldn't go on with the way things were going for me. Well, that's all passed. And still I've got absolutely nothing. And I don't care that I've got nothing either. Things in this world don't, don't particularly um, pull me in. It means nothing to me. So after these two years, over two years now of, of harassment, culminating to that point, I was, um, I've been forced to revise. Obviously the things that I've been saying, the posts that I've been writing, the truths that I've been spreading. And in that revision, recently, I discovered the reasons why I've been targeted. I'm no longer a victim. Yeah, they, they were, they were, the perpetrators were, were out just last night, just yesterday in fact, most of the day yesterday, but I'm, I'm no more a victim. This has been the best blessing for me that could have ever arose. Yesterday I spent most of the day just reading, reading the Bible. It's not a book that I've ever really wanted to read before, I don't know why. But yesterday I spent a good deal reading it. And um, something happened. It wasn't like I was reading the Bible, it was like the Bible was reading me. So I've got a work to do here. There are things that I've got to do here that I was destined to do, that I was born to do. And that I'm now ready to do. You see, the things that I was posting and um, this is the perfect time, this, this corona time is the perfect time for you to start making these videos because if you hadn't noticed, we're in quite desperately dark times. There's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of people scared, scared out of their wits. And there's no reason to be scared. This is a spiritual battle. Now, what do I mean by this is a spiritual battle? Well, what I mean is that I can, yeah, I can t continue to post things about chemtrails or um, the truth behind the government and the corporations. I could talk about anti-vaccine, could talk about all of these physical things, but that's not the base of the, of the, of the matter. And that's, it's not those things I was talking about that was getting me, that was getting me um, targeted. What was getting me targeted was the posts that I was producing up until the um, harassment started were all of a spiritual nature. Now I've come to know a certain level of truths in this world and I'm destined to portray those truths as best I can to those of you out there who are also seeking the truth and maybe some comfort in these times. Now, spiritual, it sounds a bit airy-fairy that, don't it? It sounds like you've got to go and sit in um, Lotus somewhere and go, um, for for, you know, until your third eye opens. No, it's not really like that at all. It's really quite basic. You see, for the atheists and those that believe in science, they believe in things that they can see, touch, smell, taste, hear. 
They believe in their clothes that they wear. They believe in the cars that they drive. They believe in the house that they live in. They believe, they believe in the seats that they sit on. They believe in the, walk, in the road that they walk upon. People believe, atheists and people that believe in science as their new god, they believe in all these things that they can see. They believe in food that they can taste. They believe in sounds that they can hear, like the birds. Or every single thing that the atheist believes in, his clothes, like I said, his car, his house, everything. Everything that he believes in that he can see, first of all, it came from a place that he can't see. It came from, it came, it was a thought first. It was a thought. And can you see a thought? Can you smell a thought? Can you hear a thought? Can you touch a thought? I'll rest my case. So something a long time ago kind of shone out, shone out to me. Something told me that the world that we can't see is perhaps more prevalent than the one that we can see. Seeing as everything that we can, everything we can see came from a place we can't see. It was a thought first. Somebody had to think about it before they made it. So that's how important this is, and it's the most, it's the most important um, aspect of the war that we're in at the moment. And it is a war. It's a spiritual war. In the videos that I continue to post, um, I will uh, detail and, and make things a lot more clearer and more polished. I'll um, tell you exactly what the spirit is, I'll tell you what the soul is as well. So we have those three things, those three old things called a spirit, a soul, and a body. But nobody knows what they are, and nobody can even tell. No one can even tell me the difference between a spirit and a soul. Got a bit of that sausage and egg stuck in my teeth. <laughs> um, but I can tell you that because I've done the hard work to understand it and to understand it to a level that I can pass that information on clearly. So I'm not going to talk about the perpetrators, I'm not going to talk about the state sanctioned harassment anymore. Oh, I haven't spoke about it yet, this is the first one I've spoken about, this will probably be the last time I speak about it. I might, um, I know there are uh, other individuals out there being harassed. Um, some of them are not being so, some people uh, out there claiming to be are, um, are suffering uh, mental health issues for sure. I'm not one of those people. The fact, for example, last year uh, I was, um, in, in October t uh, 2019, I tried to break, break up a, a fight that was happening outside. And for that, I was again arrested didn't hurt anyone, didn't harm anyone, didn't threaten anyone. Uh, the CC, the thing that got me, uh, uh, um, oh, well, let's, go, let's go back. So I went out to stop a fight, I got arrested. Uh, I had to face trial and I was facing 10 years for what uh, a, a, a person said about me and what happened that night, which was complete false fairy tales. And uh, I was put in the Sun newspaper and uh, completely um, dishonoured. They made me look like a crazy person. And I'm a crazy person, I'm crazy in love. <laughs> I'm in love with life, I mean look at this place. Who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? I may do some videos about the um, the state-sanctioned harassment. Um, I don't really want to speak about them much because you know they don't particularly deserve my attention, and that's what it, that's what they're ideally trying to do. But perhaps in the future, some videos will be able to help uh, those other individuals that are being targeted.
strange times. Really strange. I haven't slept that that well um, uh, the last. Well, I didn't sleep too well last night. And I've been uh, r really filled up with energy and life, trying uh, wanting to come and and uh, and speak speak to you all. Uh, we're facing some very strange times. Hang in there, fear not. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. The the um the uh perpetrators that have been acting against me. It's just sad. It's pity. It's pity. It's pitiful. You know, it's pitiful that all they have and all they can believe in is this is this physical world. That's it. That's where their that's where their that's where their life stops. Whereas I have a foot in both worlds. One in that unseen place I was just talking to you about a minute ago, and one in this physical world. And I'm not scared of the physical world, and I'm not scared of death. I'm totally not scared of death. All them people, all them perpetrators out there, I bet they are. So I'm going to leave this first video here for now. You can expect many, many more. I'm going to go, like I say, into detail. I will talk about the, um, the physical aspects that are occurring around us as well. But... Uh, my main point, the main points that I want to get across are of a spiritual nature, of the unseen. I don't even look particularly like the word spiritual because I think it's been thrown around a lot and people get confused. Especially when we've got a soul and a spirit and nobody seems to tell people the difference. So hang in there, stay creative, stay alive and I'll keep posting. God bless you, bye bye.